we're three of 31 coaches who, who get to work with the best players in the world. And I think that's the most beautiful thing about our job is the level of athlete we're dealing with. So gentlemen, either one of you, uh, what, what, what do you think is the, the pathway into the, into the National Hockey League as a head coach? What was, uh, what was your opportunity? Well, my opportunity was with Dallas, and um, what I found was the biggest challenge um, was developing relationships with the players and, you know, developing trust and care and them getting to know me and trust me and, more importantly, me getting to know them yeah. as people. And that takes time. Yeah. And, uh, unfortunately, um, you're playing games that the results matter yeah, yeah. and you're trying to develop that at the same time. And it, it just, you, you need to face adversity together before you, I think, you really take those important strides. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would have to agree with that. I got hired in Colorado uh, my first year, two weeks before um, training camp. So Good luck, you're, eh? You're, you're, <laughs> you're cramming it, it, wow. to get your coaching staff and everyone on the same page to get yeah. ready for, for training camp. And you reach out to the players really quickly. But you're already, in my case, I was already in, in the season and playing those important games when I didn't really even know any of our players personally and and so the communication has to build and 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 like Jim said it takes a lot of time and and as that trust sort of builds is where you can start having some success and and for me the, the my second season really you know after getting to know those guys and we had a, a rough year and, yeah. and going through that adversity and a, and a real rough season led to you know the six some of the success we're having now because we we went through some hard times together and we got to know each other and you know what frustrates us what makes us happy what you know makes us tick as professionals and and then you can sort of build forward together as a team well i think it's interesting because it's the same for me when when you, you know if uh, if jim's speaking about the the people side of it and you're speaking about adversity those are probably two pathways that we, we all understand is the first thing is to be a leader and that's why I ended up now in Buffalo was uh, I could feel in the interview process with Jason Botterell that it was truly the leadership uh, that he felt he wanted to see the culture that you would bring with you how would you communicate with the players was my pathway back in after 25 years of head coaching uh, you know I, I was actually in football soccer for for five seasons now, which is a crazy, uh, crazy pathway, but it allowed me to develop as a leader in a different way, where I hope I can bring some unique things now back into the hockey world, which is in my blood and where I actually come from. And if you think about adversity, I think we all three have had really hard times. I mean, there's no way somebody's coaching in the National Hockey League if they didn't have hard times. And I always say that winners are born in difficult times. And I think uh, we were able to deal with the adversity in a way that it made us or brought us growth versus stopped us from evolving, right? So you took your last season and you were able to work with the players and communicate and learn from the adversity and grow, which I find really interesting. You have to pull together in those times. And, yeah. and you know, if you fragment, then you, you don't get anywhere and you, it doesn't lead to success. So we, we were going through that tough year and we knew we weren't going to make the playoffs probably by Christmas time. Yeah. And, and we knew which core players and, and important key pieces to our makeup of our team moving forward that were all going to be back, that we needed to, to, to really sort of dig in and, and figure out what was important to us as a team and sort of pull together and start working on things that we uh, are planning for the next season. So that, that bad season gave me a jump start and gave our team a jump start yeah, yeah. on the next season. And um, so we got out of the gates pretty good and, and we added a lot of new pieces, but our leaders in, in our locker room were amazing and, and just bringing in all of our young guys and making them feel at home and, yeah, yeah. and getting a little bit more of a, um, more family atmosphere in our locker room, which, which led us to some success. Yeah, because if you don't have that atmosphere, you kind of lose the guys on the way. And what about you when you think of adversity? Jim, what do you think yeah. about? Well, I, like, it's like what about you personally as a leader? What, what was, are there some... Well, I look for adversity and yeah. um, you can't fabricate adversity, but when those button point moments happen, uh, I think that's opportunities to come together. And, um, you know, like when players 
know that you're in it with them, that's when I think your culture goes to another level. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think we've all seen that in our career. Yeah. Uh, Rob, I'm curious, uh, like, you, you had the Edmonton. Yeah. Uh, what did you learn from the Edmonton opportunity that's going to help you yeah. uh, now in Buffalo? I think more than anything was just uh, like the feedback now after I've seen a lot of those players evolve after uh, since I left there and I've been able to stay in touch with them which was a which was an interesting separation because the connection with the players was actually quite strong at the time when I was let go so I had a lot of confirmations of things that we were doing and uh, whether I've seen a Taylor Hall go to the New Jersey who we had for his first three years right or Jordan Aberle and other players that I still have contact with, I was able to, to get honest feedback on the good and the, the bad. And uh, I, I would say one of the things for sure is the accountability that we need to, we need to hold uh, true within the team c environment. You know, I think it's, uh, it's, it's like you said, we need a good relationship, but the players want us to be honest with them. And they, they, uh, I, th I think we have no time in the National Hockey League to wait. If we see things are off, we need to get on them quickly. So that would be, that would be a, a clear learner that I take with me. But uh, otherwise, the game has definitely sped up. I, I, it's, uh, it's a much quicker game in the last few years. And, uh, I try playing Colorado and Colorado. Yeah, yeah, you, two, <laughs> you two guys are going to go at it a lot more. We only see each other twice each. But uh, I look forward to those challenges, yeah. But it was a, it was a good time. But what about what about for you when you when you look at the Western Conference versus you know the East? What's the what's the difference when you when you wander over with your teams into the East? Is there a, is there a different different culture in the in the game, or is it, is I it thought quite there similar was. now? I, I yeah. thought uh, when we went to the East first couple of road trips, especially on the road, we, we got surprised by the transition offense and uh, it, it's almost like a frenetic pace and pucks are going north right away yeah, when a yeah. defenseman touches it. Yeah. Uh, whereas I thought in the West, it was it was more, there was the element of that, but it, was, yeah. the, Interesting. it wasn't the stretch game like I saw yeah, in the yeah. East. Yeah. And it was more of a half court game. Uh, yeah. A lot of teams big and heavy down low. Yeah. Um, that was the biggest difference I saw. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about you. Yeah, so, I, mean, so, I think the, the speed of the game on both sides was incredible. I think you you get your team goes into a building and you see we get to know our western conference yeah. opponents so yeah. well and you you know what to expect yeah. and and as coaches we you really have to dig in when you're going out east because you don't see those teams very often no, no. you know and 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 you you don't get to pick up on the subtle tendencies of players and 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 how you can try and coach your your team to certain details to try and win um, even though there's challenges out east you, you, you kind of you want to avoid going in there and hoping for the best and yeah, let's yeah. do what we do the more information you can give them the better off yeah. they're going to be and and so that was a challenge because you see them once and and three months or four months later you're seeing them for the second time and you just don't know those teams as well but it's fun when you go out there with your team and travel yeah, yeah. out east because I there's an excitement around it. Your team gets excited to go play, so you usually yeah. have pretty good juice and good energy going, yeah. you know, into Madison Square Garden or there's yeah. there's a, there's a, yeah, there's a lot of the, yeah, and, yeah. and and going into Canada and Montreal. Yeah. Is, it's a little bit of a wake up call. Yeah. Playing hockey night in Canada, <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah. they're the at they, they know the they're at yeah. a they're the yeah. the Canadians are at a level yeah. there yeah. that you to make sure you're ready to play right from the drop of the yeah. puck or, or you're going to be in trouble. And, and I think yeah. you kind of get immune to there. You get accustomed to the buildings out west, where out yeah. east there's, uh, there's certainly some challenges from a coaching standpoint. Well, I hope when we come to Dallas, it's uh, in January. The <laughs> <laughs> well, schedule will be out next week. We'll find out. Yeah. So we're looking for some uh, Yeah, looking for some warmer weather. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. But, yeah. so when you talk about information, when yeah. you play the teams out east, like you don't know. Like you, you go in and play Dallas, it's the third time of the year. Like, how long is your meetings with the team compared to going to play Buffalo? Yeah. Well, I, I think I think they're similar. Time, like you just don't have a lot of time, and you don't want your guys sitting around on game yeah. day a lot. I think going out east, something that I would look at this year would would be trying to give them a little bit of information of the of you know our opposition's five on five play maybe the day before if it, it fit into a, a practice day. Right. You know, yeah, oftentimes yeah. it's a travel day. But just so they can get thinking about their opponent and, and 
you, the more sure they feel, the better they're going to play and more confident they're going to play. So I think if we could, if, if for our staff, if we could give those players just a touch more or give them the same information just a little bit earlier yeah, yeah. and then just a couple uh, refresher points in the morning, it's something that I would think about. How do you, how do you think about the, the, the opportunities of teaching that we have? If you look at travel, especially in the West, you have more travel than we do. Right. But you look at the, the pace of our schedule now with the, with the defined breaks, the days off for a month. I mean, uh, what, what are maybe some top three you know, focal points for you to get teaching in all of that? Well, that was the biggest adjustment coming from college. Is yeah. college, you have so much time. Yeah. Uh, in the NHL, you don't, so because of all the reasons you just stated. And I had, like, I love to be able to teach our own game. Yeah. And then, but I also want to teach the preparation part of what the other team does well yeah, yeah. and maybe what our game plan is. Yeah, yeah. And I found it was, it was hard to get that balance. And also, like you said, not have the guy sitting around, not having 10 minute video sessions. Right. Yeah. I like to keep it to five minutes or yeah, less. So I found I needed to focus just on our team was the most yeah. important thing. Yeah. And then a couple of points of, hey, this is what we need to be focusing yeah. on yeah. so that I didn't have yeah. some long meetings. Yeah, I agree with that completely. It was, it was interesting because I, I actually got out of the coaching and was in the, 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 the role of watching the coaches last few years. And I remember two coaches ago when we let him go, uh, speaking to the players about it. And the number one thing about this coach was he focused always on the opposition and was almost in love with like Liverpool or Man City. And he would, he would, he would you know, the team would kind of go <sighs> as he would speak about Liverpool, Liverpool, Liverpool. And he never gave them solutions. He never spoke about what they needed to do, and I think you, that's important for young coaches watching this maybe today, is the, the focus on your own team, and you've just underlined that, you know, because that's, uh, that's uh, if you come out to the East, for instance, you're not going to be able to change your whole game. And so That's right. No, you're you're going to try and stuff your games down our throats, right, guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Play to our strengths, right? Exactly. Well, what about you, Jared? Yeah, you I, I think... Teaching? You know, I think is. One of the challenges is just making sure you're not giving the players too much information. And um, I, one thing I, t I, yeah, you guys I, are seeing there. I good, take yeah. I, I take a little bit is I, I try to give our guys a break from the video. I, I think there's an endless amount of coaching you can do. Yeah, you know, getting good. into players individually, but yeah. certain days will come in and it might be an optional skate and yeah. we're bringing everyone down so they're doing some recovery work or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And even though there's some things that I personally <laughs> feel like we should see, I'll, we'll just kind of leave good. our players so they they get a day yeah. to decompress mentally yeah, at yeah, least and, and do their recovery work or some guys want to go on the ice but just so they're not you know they're always in video on, on game day and getting prepared and some practice days in, in your reviews but if you can find a day or two a week where you're not giving them yeah. uh, video sessions and I think there's other ways that you can help your team improve and communicate with your players away from the computer if, if that's possible. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's dealing with technology in the right way. If you think about how we can fall in love with clips <laughs> after a game and then when you, I, I, I like what you're saying too with the five minute meetings which probably means a minute and 20 second clips maybe a minute clip. You can get a minute and 20. Yeah. You can tell me how you do I'm, it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you, you I'm guilty. guilty. I, I tell you, I'm, I'm always you'll have to cut. You'll have to cut, but you'll have to cut a little. But then you give them full days off, so maybe yeah. it comes out of the <laughs> yeah, walk. Maybe it does. But, you know, yeah. if, you, if you think about that, it's... It's, uh, it's funny because... Technology. We're... We're trying to find ways to get shorter and shorter, yeah. and, and players don't want to sit in and do video all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, you put those iPads on the bench now, yeah. and, and every, everyone's, <laughs> everyone's looking at them, right? You, yeah. Let me you're, see my You're, you're calling yeah. guys' names, and they're still looking at yeah, them. These things are flying everywhere, so yeah. it's, it's an yeah. interesting wrinkle. In, in, in some yeah. guys, I, don't, I, I think I'm sure we have some guys that don't touch them yeah. at all and yeah. some guys feel the need to yeah. look at but it what it does do is it gets your lines and players communicating on the bench so you'll see them look at this and yeah. as long as they're 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 getting that information for a purpose yeah um is that usually happening in the tv timeouts because this is definitely a change you know in the last couple of years well, and i've seen it i'm seeing it visibly but it's mostly the tv timeouts or no it's going on all those oh they'll come <laughs> yeah. yeah they'll reach for them <laughs>
Especially like special team players. Yeah. Like, Have you been injured by an iPad being you know, tossed? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. No, but I think a player's going to get injured at some point because they're looking at yeah. that and the puck's coming at the bench. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Because we know as coaches, they make your point, but keep your eye on the puck, right? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been hit by a puck? Not yet. No, okay. Stick. I got a stick across here. Yeah. No, it's good. It's good. Well, you guys, it'll be, it'll be fun when we run into each other now. And, uh, it's good to, good to meet you all. And yeah, you too. Yeah, you too. I know your owners too. I want to pick your brain on the, uh, the like. I, I love your journey. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I think it's great and everything you you, yeah. you talked you. about. Not yeah. only there, but you know what you did yeah. in Southampton and stuff. Yeah. Well, it's just the international journey. It's it's rare to get into the National Hockey League over this path. So I was kind of a specialist in world tournaments and Olympics and those kind of things versus the uh, you know the classic NHL path but the one thing I think I can feel it here at this table that uh, you know just that hunger of trying to grow as a leader you know I, I, we should never lose that passion you know and, and uh, we're going to make mistakes but but that that journey uh, kind of off the beaten track has been has been interesting it makes me really appreciate also this opportunity again uh, to to step into this fabulous environment I mean we're we're three of 31 coaches who, who get to work with the best players in the world. And I think that's, that's the most beautiful thing about our job is the level of athlete we're dealing with. And I was able to see that now in football, top athletes in a space like that. And it's, it's actually surprisingly similar, even though it's a different game. Right. But here we are in our game that we grew up with and we love and we get to do with those guys. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful place to grow, eh, guys? I, I think. Yeah, it's a great game with great yeah. people in it. Yeah, and it's nice to be with the peers. Yes. I, I think uh, it's one of the things I just spoke in the session here, the, the really good coaching sessions that they had in, in my table, and I said that's where you want to get the number one communication going is with your peer group because there's a lot of other people going to be trying to create noise around us, but I think your peer group is the one where you actually, where everybody kind of gets each other's space. And uh, hopefully we can compete with each other and still communicate. <laughs> well, that's the great thing about yeah. our fraternity. That does happen. Yeah, it does. And Jared's owners own, uh, they actually own Arsenal. Oh, yeah, that's right. So I, I met them in a different, different way over the years now. Yeah. And uh, very passionate passionate uh, sitting up in the arsenal stand or in colorado yeah they're in. great they're great yeah. and we see them at our games and the nuggets and yeah. locally and yeah. yeah so they've, they've been really supportive and they've owned the different sports franchises and, yeah. and they're very involved in all those so well it's an interesting opportunity also in buffalo because of the relationship between the bills and the sabers and uh, pagula's really like to synergize there so, um, you know, I'm going to be meeting with Sean McDermott again next week for the second time, the head coach of the Bills, right. which I, I love NFL. I don't know if you guys do as a, as, a, as a side, you know, entertainment for us. And it'll be interesting to see how we can possibly learn from each other uh, in that space, too. And you have that opportunity, too. Right? Yeah, and that's what I was going to ask you. The, one of the things that we're talking about learning as coaches and trying to become better leaders for our players and the the – the develop one of the things I've been interested in is the development model of of, of soccer, yeah. really, and and you've seen that yes. now, and and the, the, so unique, and and I think we can learn from other sports, and I'd like to get over and and you know observe training yeah, yeah. camp and just sit and yeah. listen and watch and watch how they practice and get over there for some exhibition games or something yeah. in, the, in the off season if it, that's possible it is good it is good to see the, the 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 big difference is the top players in the world of football slash soccer get three weeks off a year only because the season is stretched out so crazily. They all play in national team programs, which here it's a hit and miss and it's an off and on, but there it's part of the culture. So in September, there'd be a two-week break in October and November and March, two-week break where they would go to their national teams. So that you're coaching them, their national team coach is coaching them. You get the players back. And then at the end of the season, because how long those tournaments go, they only actually get three weeks off. Oh, wow, so, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. and the career, the, the longevity short. is short. Like by 30, guys are just falling off like that. So we, a hockey player has a lot more longevity because of the opportunity in the summer to kind of regenerate. And uh, it's, it's been interesting for me 
the, the difference there is you have to grow players. Your recruiting happens at eight years of age, eight and seven, because your academy is your draft. <coughs> you want to get one player out of your own academy. Is it unlimited, your academy? It is. It is. We had three and, uh, and three academies, and uh, it's unlimited. But it becomes very elitist, right? You have right. one academy where your best athletes are, and you, you try to work at that. So, again, it's similar to hockey. It's just we are drafting through, and, and that's why the draft and the scouting is so critically important for you because they're actually trying to see what exactly has been done with that athlete, whereas when you do it yourself, you have complete control. And as a head coach, you'd have control over the culture that's being brought through the academy too, which is interesting. But speaking of that, just shifting gears a little bit, one of the things that's always unique to every head coach is that balance of work and rest. And, yes. And the off-season training for our players has changed immensely over the last 10 years. Yeah. And, and it's more focused training and there's more recovery work and, and it, players are so dedicated to getting better. And then you get in the season and the rigors of the schedule and travel and how much is it wearing them down. There's lots of research that the teams do and whether they stay overnight after games mm -hmm. or whether you yeah. travel and yeah. changing time zones. <laughs> and you're trying, practice time is at a, pr is, it's at a premium. Yeah. And you, and, but you, don't, you want to make sure you're, if they're not energized and they don't have their legs, then, you, then you're not going to win. No, so you no. have to make sure that first and foremost are rested and and then also still be able to give them the information on video but not overwork them in practice yeah. and you see, everything has to be so much more focused now and that was the biggest challenge coming from the minors to the uh, a lot like college yeah you'd play friday saturday sunday if you yeah. had three games monday yeah. would be a day off and yeah. then you can Coach you know, peak your week and, yeah. and, and, and still give them time to recover to yeah. gear up again for three or two more yeah, games yeah. on the weekend. You, that's just impossible <laughs> with yeah, our schedule yeah. and it's yeah, you, tough to get that work in. Yeah, no, it's, it's quality versus quantity. Eh? I mean, you've got to be good and that's why we're speaking about that. Well, it's really good to meet you guys and... Uh, me too. We'll see you nice hanging out with you guys. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. We'll uh, we'll we'll be seeing you soon, and in our in our passionate hockey cities. Yeah, looking forward absolutely. to it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Thanks, Ralph. Thanks, yeah. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah. Thanks, Ralph. Good Thank luck. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck to you guys too.